This video is going to discuss how aerial thermal imaging payloads are best used when doing orthomosaics and other mapping missions. Keep in mind this is not a how-to video, but sharing best practices to improve your results. In this video, it will touch briefly on what thermal imaging is and why it's used for drone applications. Then it will discuss how resolution is different and significant when conducting these missions. After that, we'll look into how qualitative and quantitative missions are handled differently. We will discuss emissivity and how to get the appropriate numbers of pixels on target, the benefits of using dual sensor EOIR payloads, and the video will finish off by sharing some general best practices. Now thermal imaging is the visualization and measurement of radiated energy that is translated into colorized images and temperature readings. There are many benefits to using thermal imagers like seeing subjects in complete darkness and measuring temperature without contact. This is important when the temperature of the target indicates whether it's operating properly or not. Creating thermal orthomosaics or maps is desirable in instances where infrastructure covers large areas and requires precise location for repair or further evaluation. For those reasons, it is especially important to, that these missions are, uh, have a non-moving target. Commercial solar and roof inspections are two of the most common applications using this technology today. In the future, when beyond visual line of sight and other regulations allow, it's possible that long linear inspections like power line and pipeline inspections may also be interested in using a form of this approach. It is estimated that solar inspections with drones can be six to 10 times more efficient than traditional methods and allows you to inspect hundreds of acres in a single day. Whereas roof inspections also enjoy an efficiency boost as well as a highly desired benefit in accuracy and safety for the inspector. Now to be clear and upfront, what you can expect from a thermal orthomosaic today is not ideal. The technology is still being improved from a processing standpoint to drive the most value out of these images, and we're working with leaders in the software space to make this happen. In many cases though, until these improvements are made, the analysis of individual images may be a better approach to save on flight time and retain accuracy. Now the first real consideration one should bear in mind when doing thermal ortho is the resolution of the camera. A high resolution camera for thermal imagers is considered 640 by 512 and that's going to be 640 pixels on the horizontal plane and 512 pixels on the vertical plane giving you roughly 327,000 pixels in a single image. Now there are options available on the market that are lower resolution and at a lower cost but will significantly reduce the validity of your inspection. Now we'll discuss further why it's important of whether you're doing, uh, why resolution is important whether you're doing thermal images sorry, whether you're doing mapping missions or not. So here we have a 160 by 120 image on the left, similar to what you might expect from a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual or similar airframes, and a 640 by 512 on the right, uh, and this is done at the same altitude of 25 feet. Now keep in mind this is not an ideal height for doing mapping missions due to the time it would take to inspect a large area. Now the target that you're looking at is an 18 inch pizza pan that is warmed up to give a good contrast between the pizza pan itself and the pavement. Um, although the target is apparent in both images, you could see that there's greater clarity and detail when you have more pixels like the image on the right. Now as you increase the altitude of the airframe, the clarity is drastically reduced even just at 50 feet. And keep in mind that the difference in temperature between the pan and the pavement is significant. The anomaly or subject you're monitoring will not always be so distinct. Because we're dealing with a lower count of pixels than what you're used to in RGB cameras, stitching blob-like shapes becomes increasingly difficult, let alone to measure the temperature. Now at 100 feet, each pixel on the ground with the 160 by 120 camera represents 7.5 inches. Now for thermal, you want to get a minimum of 3 by 3 pixels on your target for detection and 5 by 5 pixels to even consider measuring its temperature. That means that at 100 feet, the anomaly would have to be more than 22 inches to detect and over 3 feet to measure the temperature with a 160 by 120 camera. This is not conducive to good and efficient inspections. Now this slide is important for anyone considering doing different missions uh, that they might conduct with their thermal imaging drone. What this chart is showing is a comparison of a 160 by 120 and a 640 by 512 camera at different altitudes. The number in the columns under the two resolutions are ground sampling distance or what each pixel represents in inches on the ground. With knowing the size of the target you'd like to locate or inspect, you could plug it into this table considering 3x3 pixels for detection and 5x5 
or more pixels for temperature measurement. To figure out the allowable distance from the target you must fly. Now keep in mind that the more pixels you have on target, the better. So for solar inspections, when the typical cell is 6 by 6 inches, you would need to fly at around 25 feet from the solar uh, cell with a 160 by 120 camera to merely detect the anomaly. Whereas you could be at 75 feet with a 640 by 512 camera and uh, even estimate good temperature measurement at 50 feet. This chart also shows you that unless your subject is massive, the usefulness of low resolution thermal sensors is gone once you're above 75 feet, but the 640 by 512 is still really useful well above 200 feet. Now, it's important to know whether you're doing a qualitative or quantitative inspection. The simple question to ask yourself is if the actual temperature of your subject is important or if the relative temperature is a good enough indicator. Detection of people or wildlife is a qualitative mission because regardless of the actual temperature of the subject, you're merely wanting to locate them through the distinction of temperatures between it and its surroundings. For solar inspection, radiometric capabilities are especially preferred. Radiometry in thermal cameras allows you to store the temperature data for every pixel within the image. Now, not all drone cameras store this data, so when you, you need to make sure that you have the right camera for your intended mission. When doing orthomosaics, the accuracy of the temperature data drops drastically due to what happens in thermal at different angles or even over short periods of time. That is one reason why getting these missions done in a short amount of time is important. This goes further into resolution and altitude, as well as image overlap, which we'll discuss later. Emissivity is by far the most important factor for accurately measuring temperature with thermal imaging cameras, and you must set this before your flight in the camera settings. What em emissivity means is the surface, surface's material uh, and its ability to emit rather than reflect solar energy and is expressed as a per percentage compared to a 100% completely emissive black body. While solar panels are generally a uniform emissivity, they still vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. And on the other hand, roofing materials can be found all over the spectrum. Measuring your target's specific emissivity in the field is crucial if your deliverable is a quantitative measurement, uh, temperature measurement. The table here just gives you a general guide, but if you want to learn more on how to measure the emissivity of your target correctly, maybe you should consider taking one of the infrared training center's thermography courses. It's much too involved to be even begin explaining in a video like this. Now distance from target is also a key component of good temperature measurement. Not only is this pertaining to the number of pixels on the subject or anomaly, but also considering that the more distance between the drone uh, or the drone camera on the surface, the more atmospheric variables are present to impact the accuracy. Flying closer gives you better identification and accuracy, but when flying mapping missions, this also leads to much more flight time. Now when flying either type of inspection, it's a best practice to take both thermal and RGB imagery. If your hardware has a bore-sided EOIR sensor package, you'll be able to take both simultaneously and use both sets of data to analyze the anomaly. Also, Many processing engi engines will allow you to take both sets of data and create the map by overlaying the thermal images on top of the stitched RGB imagery. False positives lead to bad deliverables and can be caused by several things apparent in the visible spectrum that look problematic in thermal inspection. For instance, in solar inspections, these things can be bird poop, dirt, shading, moisture, and for roofs, it could be different materials on the roof that emit solar, Im uh, solar energy differently. So here are some general guidelines when you're doing either type of these inspections, uh, using or creating orthomosaics. Now firstly, you want to avoid motion blur by flying low enough to serve the purpose, but slow enough to get good imagery. A standard speed will be no higher than 12 to 15 miles per hour. If you're getting motion blur still, you can increase the altitude, but only to a certain point that you get enough pixels on target. For mapping, the overlap and side lap requirements are roughly 80% by 80% for most processing engines. The more you increase these parameters uh, and increase the side lap or overlap, the longer the inspection takes. In contrast, when you do individual image inspection, side lap can be reduced to about 20%, speeding up the capture time, but obviously increasing analysis time. Artificial intelligence is doing, uh, in doing the analysis work in the future will be the direction that this technology is pointing. But today, for several reasons, the larger the installation, the less likely an orthomosaic will be useful. 
Now lastly, the time of day a mission is flown can significantly change the results and validity of the inspection. For thermal inspections, delta T, or the difference in temperature of your subject to its surroundings, is crucial. This will make your anomaly much more pronounced. Solar inspections are best flown in the middle of the day when the sun is high in the sky. You want to capture imagery when the panels are absorbing the most solar energy. Defects will appear hotter because they are no longer absorbing energy but reflecting it back onto the camera. Whereas RGB data for roof inspections should be done close to noon when there's a least amount of sh uh, shadowing on the roof. But for the thermal inspection, it's best to be done when the sun goes down. Now keep in mind that both uh, solar and roof inspections require the surface to be dry. Now, please feel free to reach out to me by email if you have any feedback or follow-up questions. I really hope you enjoyed the video.